Thanks for joining me. Now, today we're going to talk about carburetors. Lovely carburetors on four stroke outboards. Um, we get a lot of, uh, excuse me, while I adjust my camera a little bit, um, we get lots of inquiries about what's wrong with my carburetor? Why doesn't my carburetor work? Uh, so, uh, I thought I'd do a video on uh, what, how, how to easily diagnose four circuits in your carburetor. Um, there's a lot of mystery about carburetors. They have uh, lots of passages and uh, bits and pieces that people don't understand. So I'm going to try and take some of the mystery away from how the carburetor, how you can diagnose it. I'm not going to get into the details of how it actually works and uh, Bernoulli's principles and all that sort of stuff. We're going to, you're watching this because uh, your outboard's not running or it's not running properly and you think it's the carburetor. So I'm going to show you the four things that are most likely causing uh, a, a running problem with your carburetor. Um, or a not running problem, can't get it started, you think it's the carburetor because you have spark. So we'll, uh, at another time, I'm going to do a, um, a video on a, a diagnostic procedure for um, a no start situation. But for now, we're just going to assume that you've decided that it's your carburetor that's a problem. And uh, let's have a look at, the, at it. So there's, like I said, there's four circuits that are your usual culprits in a carburetor. You have your main circuit um, for your main jet. This is your main fuel circuit. That's where um, your fuel goes for most of your running when you're um, above idle. Uh, the other circuit you have is an idle circuit that's underneath this screw that is only affected um, when you're idling, when the engine's running slow, 600, 700 RPM. That's your idle circuit. Uh, you have an accelerator pump circuit or um, an enrichment circuit in the case of this carburetor here, uh, which richens up the mixture through this little port here on the side uh, when you accelerate really quickly. So when you snap the throttle, when you move your throttle really quickly, it needs a little shot of fuel um, to uh, so that it doesn't stumble. And then the other circuit that we will uh, we're going to talk about is uh, is your needle and seat and your float circuit. So your little needle and seat float valve, very common problem. Excuse me. So let me uh, zoom my camera down to the bench top here. Whoops, that was a bit of a fail. Let's try this. Okay, so this is a Yamaha carburetor, um, but uh, all, most four-stroke outboard carburetors are very, very similar. Um, we'll uh, put that back together properly. There we go. So this is how it sits on your carb on your engine. This is your float bowl on the bottom. This holds a certain amount of fuel in there um, for the engine to run it. Um, uh, end use while it's running. Uh, the float level is very, very important uh, on these, and uh, we're going to talk about that when we get to the needle and seat. Our first circuit. Now, before you get carried away here, your carburetor needs to be this clean inside when you take it apart. When you open it up, if you've got a big pile of crud and grunge and sand and slime in the bottom here, it's going to need a major, major, major clean. Um, sometimes they can't even be cleaned if they're too bad. Uh, the biggest culprit is water uh, that you get in, uh, that gets into your fuel system from the ethanol um, in, the, in the fuel now. So, um, we encourage people to not use ethanol, uh, fuel with ethanol in it. You want to use uh, 
premium fuel or marine fuel that doesn't have ethanol in it um, because it absorbs moisture from the atmosphere, becomes water, settles in the bottom of your float bowl, very corrosive with the, with the, the ethanol in there, and it goes all grungy and cruddy. And, uh, well, here's a... It, this is a thermostat, but th that's what they look like in the bottom when you get all sorts of horrible stuff. Okay, I dug around out in the uh, scrap pile there and I found a dirty old carburetor for an example here. This is what, oh, I wish you could smell this, this is what stale fuel smells like. Uh, this carburetor is probably beyond repair. Uh, we have a very big buildup of corrosion and sludge in there. If you are really keen, you could get in there with a small wire brush and scrape it all out, and hose it all out. Uh, this is just the float bowl. This is, uh, that's our main jet, and you can see it's got a big, horrible layer of goo on there. Let's see how close we can get there. That's just on the surface of it. So the, the passageway in there is going to be well blocked. Now the ultrasonic would probably clean that up um, after about an hour in the tank. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's extremely dirty, this one. If your carburetor is coming apart this dirty, There's a dirty percolation tube. Uh, and then this here is the, the rubber style plug over the idle jet. Um, remember the jet down here is about, oh, see it's not even coming undone because of corrosion. Oh, there we go, okay. Uh, the jet in there is like 15 thousandths of a thick, uh, of an inch diameter hole. And uh, let's see if I can zoom in and give you a closer look here. There we go. Trying to stay in the shot, working on the camera. Where is it? There we go. Uh, it's got a lot of crud build up on there. Um, it would be, I'll just zoom back out again here. It would be uh, be sort of 50-50 whether this is worth fixing or not. You'd have to weigh it up whether another carburetor is uh, cost effective, if the whole motor is worth the investment. Um, but I wanted to show you this to show you uh, a dirty carburetor. Um, We've got corrosion on our needle there. Uh, we've got nasty corrosion crud buildup on the uh, on the seat. Uh, it's just generally in bad shape, so it's going to be hard to clean this one out and make it run again. Thankfully, it just came out of the scrap pile, so uh, it doesn't need to run again. I just wanted to show you uh, a dirty one for reference. In there. So moving forward, we're going to assume that your carburetor is relatively clean. Um, if it's got lots of sandy, crunchy, horrible stuff in there, you probably just need to replace the carburetor. It's really hard to get them clean and we'll, I'm going to show you why that's a problem and why it's so hard uh, in a moment. Now if you've just got a little bit of uh, stale fuel in there, some slimy stuff that's not too bad, you can use a, a spray on um, carburetor clean, cleaner, spray it out, brake cleaner works, lots of very powerful jet in there. You can use the uh, nozzle, uh, they come with the, uh, the spray nozzles on them, this is a, a penetrating oil but uh, same stuff, and you can get the uh, the nozzle right down into your into your passageways and blow them out. I'll show you that in a moment. <clears throat> okay, first circuit, your main jet. In this case and in most cases, most cases, the main jet feeds your idle jet as well. 
If your main jet is blocked, um, the engine won't run, plain and simple. Uh, you, you might get it to fire through uh, with a choke on. Um, you might get it to try and start. But if that main jet is blocked, uh, your engine's not going to run. Now, before you take that main jet out, make sure you have a sharp screwdriver. If your screwdriver looks like this, I'll just drag this out of my junk bin to give you a demonstration show you if the end of it's all rounded over and got nicks out of it and stuff like that don't put it in your main jet because you're going to just tear your jet apart you want a nice sharp clean screwdriver that fits into the groove nice and tight so a good fit it's got to fit in there properly um, to be able to undo that these jets get pretty tight sometimes um, so you want to be able to uh, put a lot of force on it and you need a good screwdriver to do that. Don't use a rounded out, worn out piece of junk. You can grind it up, you grind your screwdriver up on a on a grinder or file or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's how we take our main jet out. This one's got an o-ring seal on the side of it. This one, I don't know if uh, <coughs> you'll be able to see that. Or not. Let's see if we can put a white background. You can actually, yeah, you can. You can see through that. So this one, I measured it earlier. It's uh, just over a sixteenth of an inch is the size of the hole in your main jet. Pretty small. Not as small as your idle jet, though. So what does it take to block that? One drop of water. That's all it takes. Water is thicker than gas, so when you're... Uh, if you get a drop of water into your float bowl, the, um, it, that's all it takes to, uh, to block up that main jet is one drop of water. That's it. So we, uh, we're, we're pretty sticky about uh, water separating fuel filters on your, uh, on your boats. Keep the water out of your carburetor. Um, so that's your main jet. Underneath your main jet, is a little brass tube. This one's nice and loose. Sometimes you have to reach in there with a little hook and uh, push it out from the top there to get it out. This one's nice and clear, clean. So this one, this is a what we call a percolation tube. It sits like this above your main jet, like so. So when it's running, You've got gasoline comes up from your float bowl through your main jet and travels up this tube and goes into your engine down in there. So this all sits in there like so and the gasoline comes out there. These little holes in the side there are where it lets in a little bit of air to percolate or help atomize the fuel before it comes out the top hole here. So. Those little tiny holes along the side, they all need to be clean. And the passageway all the way through that needs to be clean for the fuel to get up and into the engine. So that's pretty simple. Um, if you got a little bit of something in your, uh, in your main jet there, you can use a little piece of wire very carefully. You don't want to scratch the internal surface there because that will restrict your oil flow or your fuel flow. Um, and you can clean that out. We have an ultrasonic cleaner that uh, that we clean our jets in, but uh, you can use, soak them in carburetor cleaner overnight and uh, then give them a little scrub with a copper wire is, uh, is ideal because it's nice and soft and won't scratch. So that's your main circuit. When it's restricted or blocked, if it's restricted, the engine will run, but only with the choke on. So you pull a choke out, or when it's cold, it'll it'll run, And but once it warms up, it won't run. Um, if it's blocked, the engine won't run at all. Plain and simple, no run. So that's the first one. Second circuit is your idle circuit. It is under this plug here. Uh, sometimes uh, there's a little rubber plug next to it. Most of these outboard, uh, four-stroke outboard carburetors are very similar. The idle jet is next to the main jet, just like so. 
So the idle jet is under this cover here, that I, this plug that I've already loosened off. Again, make sure you've got a nice tight fitting screwdriver in there. You want it to fit in the slot nice and tight. These get tight and you don't want to damage them. Take that plug out and way down in there, where's my pointy thing? Way down in there is another jet, which is your idle jet. This is the one that most people don't know is there, can't see, can't find it or whatever. You need a, again, a sharp screwdriver that fits it properly and, uh, and will also reach down in there and not damage the threads. So I obviously have an assortment of different screwdrivers that I use for all my different carburetors that are all the right size. Um, don't try and get in there with the car with a screwdriver that's the wrong size. You're just going to damage it. And if you can't get that jet out <clears throat> to clean it, uh, it'll never idle. So you got to be able to take this main jet out or this idle jet out to clean it. Now this one is tiny. This is the jet that uh, meters the amount of fuel that the engine gets when it's idling. So when it's just putting along at six or seven hundred RPM. All the fuel it's running on is coming through that little tiny hole there. Give you an idea how small it is. This is a piece of wire that I pulled out of a small wire brush. Uh, and it just fits through the jet in there. It is tiny. Um, I can't, there's no way you can see through that. If I hold it up to my eye and, and line it up perfectly, I can see through it. And that's what you need to do to make sure it's clear. If you can't see through there, it's blocked and your engine won't idle. Um, back to the wire, let's just measure that and see what size that is. That is um, 13 thousandths of an inch, about the thickness of a thick hair. Very, very tiny jet. Um, Again, we clean them in the ultrasonic cleaner, um, which gets right down in there and gets all the grunge out of them. But um, So <clears throat> if your idle jet is blocked, but your main jet isn't, you, what you'll have is you'll need to open your throttle a bit and you'll get the engine started and it'll run. But as soon as you close it back down to idle speed, it'll stall. It'll die every time. That's because that little 13 thousandths of an inch hole in there is blocked not getting any fuel to flow through when the engine's idling. So that's your idle circuit. Accelerator circuit. This one's a little bit tricky. Let me run over and grab it. This carburetor uses an external enrichment circuit that when you, uh, in this case, it's a mechanical throttle, uh, remote control. When you give it a lot of throttle, it pumps a blast of air through this port on the side here, <clears throat> which pushes the fuel up your main circuit uh, and richens it up. When you give it a lot of throttle, this valve opens up like that. The engine gets a gut full of air and be before the fuel can start flowing through your main jet and it will stumble and stall if your accelerator pump or your enrichment circuit is blocked or not working properly. So to uh, uh, when that gets that gut load of air, it needs extra fuel as well. So you have an enrichment circuit that squirts some fuel in there. In this case, it's external. It pumps some air in here, which blows some fuel out through your main circuit um, and richens it up and stops that stumble when you accelerate quickly. Uh, this carburetor here, this one's off of Mercury outboard. This one has, there's my throttle there. This one has a little diaphragm here. So when you, when you open that throttle quickly, there's the throttle there. When you open it quickly, this plunger goes down and squeezes fuel up and through and squirts it out through that little nozzle there. We'll get to that very shortly here. Um, and then the last circuit that is important with, uh, that causes a lot of problems with, uh, with outboard motors is your needle and seat. So this is your float bowl. This is the main body of your carburetor here. It goes on like so. Within this, 
we have a float like this. In this case, this is the float. And it opens and closes. It, as fuel comes in here, it floats up. And this little valve comes up and closes off your fuel supply. Right there is your seat, and this is the needle. So that needle goes down in there, and with that down, it's, it stops the fuel supply. So this one has a little hook that hooks into a slot on your float there. I'm not sure if you can see it past my fingers. And whoops. Then we'll put our little axle in there. So this is what it looks like when it's all together. And there's your float movement there. So let me just grab the screw for that, which is there. And that holds it all in place. So when the engine's sitting normally, let's just tilt this up for you. Your float drops when the, when the bowl is empty. And then as fuel is pumped in and the level rises, the float comes up and closes your needle off, closes your needle and seat off, stopping fuel from flowing in. And while the engine's running, this float is just opening and closing, opening and closing, maintaining the correct fuel level in your float bowl. Now your fuel level is really important because of this. We'll go back down here. A little too far there. So, if you remember from before, there's our main jet. Fuel comes in the bottom, rises up this tube. Now, when this engine's running, normally the fuel level is about here on your percolation tube. If your float level is too low, the fuel's way down here. Now, the fuel travels from that level out to here, by suction that's caused <clears throat> through the Venturi and Bernoulli's principle and all that sort of stuff that we're not going to get into. If your float level is too low, the, the suction here isn't enough to suck enough fuel up and get enough fuel to your carburetor. If your float level is too high, the suction here will suck too much fuel and not get enough air into your percolation tube. Uh, and your engine will run too rich. So your float level is actually very, very important. So how do you check your float level? <clears throat> well, there's all sorts of measurements and dimensions and everything like that. Um, I have yet to find a, an outboard carburetor that doesn't work like this. It's really simple. With your float, let me just tilt this up a little bit so it's more level. With your carburetor turned upside down and your float and needle and seat, with your needle and seat closed, your float needs to be level. So it needs to be parallel with this surface here. In this case here, I'm not sure if you can see, there, there's a nice seam around here. It's got some profiles on the bottom, ignore that, but there's a nice seam around the edge there and it's parallel with this surface. Now something I see quite often, and it's confused a lot of people over the years. <clears throat> I've seen this surprisingly in a surprising number of times, even with brand new needles and seats. One thing I've seen <clears throat> is this needle that down, is too long, ever so slightly, 10 thousandths of an inch, 15 thousandths of an inch, too long. So when this all goes together, just like I just showed you, oops, I'm going to put this together slightly wrong and give you a demonstration. Not even sure I'm going to be able to do it. Yeah, that's, that's a bit extreme. Um, but if your needle and seat is too long, it's not going to sit. Let's turn it like that. It does not sit level 
with the mating surface on your float bowl. That's the key thing to make sure that your uh, your float level is right, is that mating surface. It, it's got to be parallel. <clears throat> the reason for that is when the engineers do that, you get the most leverage on, a, on your valve when it's at 90 degrees, and uh, that's the way they design it. So if you don't know what your float level spec is, don't panic, just set it up level. Now the other problem that we have with needles and seats is they leak. So it takes very a, 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 a thread on your needle um, or a, uh, a hair on the seat in there is all it takes to hold this needle off the seat and cause it to leak. If that needle and seat leaks, you get too much fuel in your float bowl and you get a rich condition, usually flooding and, uh, and a no start situation. Um, generally with, uh, you'll get rainbows in the water of, of extra fuel that's coming out your exhaust or dribbling down the side of the, uh, the outboard um, because that's leaking. Um, so, how do you check and make sure that your needle and seat is sealing properly? In this case, we have to put the float bowl on because the fuel comes up. This is our fuel inlet here comes in this tube, goes into this passageway, across, and up to your needle and seat there. So I'm just going to grab a few screws here. And we'll throw this on. No fuel in this carburetor. Uh, just put it together. Needle and seat is in there. Float is going up and down. We shake it. You can hear it rattle a little bit. So with the, let's tilt this up. With the carburetor sitting level like it normally does when it's running, the float, the float will be all the way down and that valve will be open. So if we blow up through here, through the fuel inlet, we will be able to blow air through into your float bowl. Simple. So how do we know if it's sealing, which is the really important part? Turn it over. Float drops down, closes your needle and seat, and you can't blow through that. If you can, you have a leak. No air is going through there whatsoever. Uh, that tells me that that needle and seat is sealed up properly. So that's one of my last checks when I'm putting a carburetor together is uh, check your needle and seat. Flip it over, blow in there, you can blow real hard. It won't. You will not lift that off its seat. Nope, <laughs> not gonna happen. Uh, it seals up good and tight. So those are your four circuits that are common spots for problem. Let's have a look here. Again, if your carburetor is full of junk, dirty sand, grunge, uh, you've got some pretty serious problems. If you're searching for a drivability issue, those are the things that you, these are the circuits that you need to check. Now, let's just take it one step further real quick here at the end of the movie here. Just take this all apart so that you can see what we're talking about. So, the idle circuit is pretty straight, or the main circuit is pretty straightforward. It runs up through here, and you can see the tip of my screwdriver inside the carburetor. That's where your main fuel flows when the throttle's open. You can see the throttle opening and closing in there. So when the throttle's open, you're cruising along down around the lake or down the ocean, going to your favorite fishing spot. <clears throat> fuel is flowing through your main jet coming out there and coming out past your, your throttle blades there. That circuit's real simple. Now your idle circuit is one of the more complicated circuits uh, on the carburetor. It gets fuel from here. Above your main jet, you have to look real careful and I don't think you'll even be able to see it in the video here, but diagonally, there's a little hole in the side here <clears throat> that feeds this tube here because there's a plug on there normally. 
So they've taken a drill and they've drilled through there into the other side. It's a very small hole that feeds your idle circuit. You need to make sure that that's not blocked. The likelihood of that being blocked is pretty slim unless you've got a varnish buildup from stale fuel uh, in there because all the fuel has to go, everything has to go through your main jet to get to your idle circuit. So you need to make sure that one's clear. Now, this is where it gets kind of fun. How do we know where the idle fuel goes? Well, we follow it down the side here. These castings have, you can see that there's a tube right along there. And there's another one right along here. <clears throat> follow them along. This one here, if you follow it along, comes out here and goes up to here. And you can see that that's obviously where air goes in. So that's where air gets in for your idle circuit. And then this one here, that's where your fuel comes up. Now you can see here, if you look down there, those holes are plugged and it comes up here on top. So it's come all the way up from the bottom, comes up to the top, and it runs through these passageways here. So when you get your fuel coming up through here, it works its way around and into your idle circuit here. Now, what we've got on the side here is your idle mixture screw. Now sometimes this hole on the side will be blocked and you won't even be able to see the screw in there, but the screw sits down in there like that. And that's how you adjust how much fuel the engine gets at idle. It screws in and out through here and the fuel goes into a, well, at idle it goes in through here and then at transfer it goes in through some tiny little holes there. So <clears throat> again, your carburetor needs to be this clean for it to work. If it's not this clean, if you've got drops of water in there, if you've got sand and grit and grunge and varnish in there, it's probably not going to work because these holes are tiny. Let's see if you can see. If I open that up. Let's see if that shows. There. There. You can see a little bit of light shining through there. Those are your idle transfer holes. Um, so those ones flow a bit of fuel when you just open the throttle just a little bit. So you're still on your idle circuit. The fuel is coming out of this little hole here in the top of your carburetor. That's where your idle fuel comes in because this throttle blade is closed and there's no fuel coming through your main jet. <clears throat> so you need to make sure that that one's clear. So where I was going with all this is you can easily follow all your passageways and work out where the fuel goes and where the air flows. And you can use your spray bottle of WD-40, carb cleaner, brake clean, whatever you'd like. And you can actually get it into those holes and spray it through. Let's see if I can do this without... Uh, getting it all over camera. So let's uh, we'll go in there. You see the fuel come out there, out the top there? Or this is, a, this is a penetrating oil. There you go. So that tells me that passageway is nice and clear. That's part of our idle circuit. I've put it in the under the idle jet there. That tells me the passageway is nice and clear. There's no blockage in there. Um, so that idle circuit's clear. You can do that with all of your circuits. You can do it. There's, uh, this is your enrichment circuit. I don't think the tube's going to go in. Oh, yeah, that goes in there. So we spray it in there. You can see that it comes up through your main jet so that I know that that enrichment circuit is clear. So that's how you use your uh, um, penetrating oil, WD-40. Move it. This is my favorite penetrating oil. Um, you can use brake clean or uh, whatever you want, uh, carburetor cleaner and spray it through all your little internal passages and make sure they're all clear. And that's how you make sure they're clear. Um, I think that pretty much covers the four circuits, your main jet, your idle jet, your accelerator circuit, um, and your needle and seat. Um, follow your tubes. 
some of them have. So in the case of an accelerator circuit, this one has one that it actually doesn't use because it uses a different enrichment circuit. But uh, I can show you on this ball here. This would be an accelerator pump circuit if it had an accelerator pump like this on it, which this carburetor doesn't. But they just didn't, uh, it's not all connected. So um, in this case, the accelerator pump, if it had one, would squirt fuel out of this nozzle here at the front of the carburetor squirts it through that way. That fuel, you take the float bowl off and you see that that fuel comes from this passageway here. Look at the side of the bowl, follow that passageway down, follow it across, follow it over. You can continue to follow it and you can see that in this case it just comes over to the other side of the float bowl. Um, it's not really used in this case. Uh, if it, there was an accelerator pump circuit, it, there would, it would be on the side there in a little pump thing like this one. But you can use the same technique. Put this in your circ in your uh, in the hole there, spray it, and you can see the fuel come out. Or you see the oil come out the other side. That tells me that that passageway is clear. Pro pretty simple. Uh, you can do it with all your passageways, um, and then that, that will confirm to you that all your circuits, those four main circuits, are clear. You can do it with your main, with your uh, needle and seat. Fuel comes in here. I'll do it backwards because it's going to be easier, and you'll be able to see the fuel come out, or the oil come out there. There we go. So that passageway is clear. That's how you make sure your carburetor is clear so that when you put it all back together, you know that that's not your problem, that there is no problem with your carburetor. No sense just guessing and hoping. You want to make sure that you know that it's clean and clear um, before you put it all back together. I hope that helps. Let me zoom this back up to me. There we go. I hope that helps you sort out your carburetor. You're probably going to have a million questions. Um, not quite sure, uh, not real clear on one aspect or another. Don't hesitate to contact us at Canada Wide Marine. We're happy to help you out. Um, when you're putting your carburetor back together, you'll want new gaskets um, and seals. Um, we can get you all the carburetor kits you need. We'll need your serial number and make and model and all that sort of stuff, but we can get them for you. Uh, we have a lot of them on the shelf um, for the, the common stuff. And if we don't have it on the shelf, we can get it for you pretty, pretty quick. So supply chain be issues being what they are. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I hope that helps you out.